So Trezor recently announced their new Safe 5 hardware wallet, and one of the new features they were promoting as part of this was a new approach to backups that's a little bit different to the standard 12 and 24 word seed phrases that we are used to. By default, the Safe 5 will generate a single 20 word slip 39 backup, and where it gets really interesting is that you'll also have the ability to create new backup phrases including multi-phrase backup sets after the initial setup, while still maintaining access to the same wallet and accounts. So no need to go manually moving funds if you want to move to a new seed phrase. This wasn't previously possible with Slip39 and actually is a compatibility breaking change to the standard that we'll talk about later. The other really interesting thing about this is that this enhanced backup feature was also pushed out to all existing Trezor devices running the core family of firmware. What that means for normal people is that if you have a Trezor T, a Safe 3 or even a DIY Trezor core dev board like I have here, you can actually update to the latest firmware and test out this enhanced backup feature yourself right now. So in this video I'll just be doing a bit of a deep dive into this new enhanced backup feature, running through what the new device setup workflow looks like and new options that are there, showing you what it looks like to take one of these new seeds and also to create a multi-share backup from it after you've done the initial device setup. I'll talk about some of the advantages of this new approach as well as some of the compatibility issues uh, that you should be aware of as well. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Alright, so first things first, let's just run through what the device setup looks like with this new enhanced backup feature. Now, while I could use either a Trezor Safe 3 for this or my dev board, I'm just going to use a Trezor T. So I factory reset it and we'll open it up in Trezor Suite. I've used this before, so I'll just say yes, set up my Trezor. It's running the most recent firmware, which is what we need for this new functionality to be there. And I'll just say create new wallet. And this screen here is new. So basically what we can do now is instead of just saying create wallet, we can actually click a drop down here and choose what type of wallet we want to use. And we can see that the 12 word backup is still selected, which has been the default for the Trezor T since it launched. What's nice is we can also select a 24 word seed for this if we want and you'll see it warns us here that these BIP39 seeds can't be easily upgraded to multi-share backups whereas these SLIP39 ones can. So I'll just select this one here, single share backup because that will be the default for the Trezor Safe 5 and I'll say create wallet. And basically over here, so we'll just say, press it down, say create wallet. There we go and we will say continue to backup. It will give us these warnings here in Trezor Suite and I'll say create backup. And now we do it over here on the Trezor. So I'll just say continue. I understand. And now we write down the seed words. There we go. So the backup is complete. So other than the ability to select what type of seed we want to use, that initial setup process was pretty much the same as what we are used to on a standard BIP39 workflow. So what I want to show you now is how we use this device that we just set up with the 20 word seed we just created to create a new multi-share seed backup. So we're in Trezor Suite. So what we're going to do is go into settings and go into device. And we will see this option here, multi-share backup, which will only appear if we have a supported seed on here. So basically what we can do is click create multi-share backup. It gives us some important warnings about how this works as well as a warning that our current backup stays valid. I'll talk about that more later. Uh, as well as some notes that we have to accept. So I will just say create multi-share backup. So basically what we need for this is our current backup that we just created before and we are going to enter these seeds into the Trezor here. So I'll say enter current wallet backup. So the first step of this workflow is a recovery check. So we need our current wallet backup. That's the one that I just wrote down before and we're going to enter it into this device and we must do that before it will let us proceed. So we'll say check. So I've got my 20 word backup here. So I will just say that I have a 20 word backup and now I have to enter in these recovery words. And if we've entered that correctly, this is the screen that will come up and we can see that the instructions over here in Trezor Suite have also changed. So I will just say create backup. And basically now I can choose the number of shares that I want. So in this instance, what I will do is I will create a two of three backup shares. So we're gonna get three sets of seed backups. And the threshold I will set is two. 
So basically what that's going to mean in this situation is I will need two of the three backup shares that I have to be able to reconstitute my wallet. And the great thing about Slip39 is if someone has one of the shares, you know, they actually can't do anything with it. It's not like splitting your seed in half, where someone who has half of the seed has half of the seed words. Each of these Slip39 shares are completely independent and they are entirely useless until you have the threshold number of shares. And again, you can set the number of shares in the threshold to be as high or as low as you like based on what kind of security or resilience uh, goals you have in terms of how you plan to distribute these shares. You know, needing something like three of five or two of three is a fairly common way to allow you to be able to have multiple different backup sets, but still to be able to have some sort of redundancy in there as well in case you lose some or they are destroyed. All right, so now we need to write down and check the shares. And the process for this is exactly the same as what happened when we originally wrote down the 20 seed words for the single backup set. So we'll say continue. This gives us some more warnings. And now we just write all of these words down. And there we go. So we've written them down and we'll just say continue. Your backup is done, continue. There we go. And again, it gives us some important information about how our previous wallet will still work, as well as how to maybe use our new multi-share backup. With the reminder being that this single backup set will still work and can be used to recover the wallet on its own. And these three shares would be split up and distributed in a way that allows us to securely uh, recover the wallet in case something happens at one of the locations or one is lost and damaged. One of the questions people often have is, can I create these multi-share backup sets from an existing BIP39 seed? And the simple answer is that as it stands right now, there is no standardized way to convert from a BIP39 mnemonic to a SLIP39 mnemonic set. You know, there are a few ways you could achieve this, but they would be very messy and would not be compatible with existing SLIP39 implementations. You know, this is essentially something that would need to be included in a future revision of the standard and honestly, given Slip39 has been around for a few years, I do not see that happening. So if you do want this new feature, you pretty much will need to move to a new Slip39 based seed. And this is also a good spot to mention that the ability to create new sets of shares is not available for older Slip39 seed. Any Slip39 seed that does not have the new extendable flag set cannot be sort of reworked into new different configurations, numbers of shares, and so on. Uh, just like moving from BIP39, uh, you will need to create a new SLIP39 seed that supports the new standard, lets you create new sets of shares, move the funds over manually, and go from there. The other important thing to say is this new backup feature has changed how SLIP39 works. So if you take one of these newly generated extendable seeds, it actually won't work with older SLIP39 implementations, and you'll get presented with a message that the seed has an invalid checksum. In terms of hardware, as of today, uh, the devices that work are all of the core Trezor devices running firmware 2.7.2 or above. And if you are trying to use a Trezor with firmware older than this, it will not accept the SLIP39 seed. You need to update to the latest firmware for it to work. Hardware from other vendors like the Keystone that doesn't currently work but may get fixed in coming months. In terms of software, Electrum supports this updated version of Slip39. I added support to it to BTC Recover just yesterday. And Ian Coleman's tool doesn't currently work but does have an open uh, PR on their GitHub to fix this. If you are someone who's wanting to recover funds from a Slip39 wallet, the process that I outlined uh, in this video here does still work. But for now, you'll need to use an updated fork of Ian Coleman's tool that I have hosted here. And in terms of broader software support, Trezor do seem to be pushing this new standard much harder than they originally pushed Slip39 when it came out. But ultimately, time will tell uh, how broad its adoption actually is. But at the very least, it's important to know that there are options to recover your funds uh, even without depending on a Trezor device. So you don't have to be worried about vendor lock-in. So let's talk a little bit about the advantages of this new scheme. One of the major advantages of this approach is it gives users a way to add both security and redundancy to their backups without needing to add something like a BIP39 passphrase. The issue with BIP39 passphrases is they are dependent on the user to choose a good passphrase and they're also really prone to simple typos and mistakes when entering them in or recording them. So passphrases can be a challenge and are an advanced features. Alternatively, a multi-share backup scheme like we've been looking at here allows you to do something like have a two of three uh, backup scheme, which means you don't have to worry about someone finding you know, a single copy of your seed, but it also allows you to be 
be able to spread those backups out across multiple locations. And with the addition of secure elements in the Trezor Safe 3 and the Trezor Safe 5 hardware wallets, it also resolves the potential key extraction attacks that earlier Trezors were susceptible to. So it seems to me that most Trezor users who want to secure their backups like this would be much better served with a multi-share seed and to simply disable the passphrase feature entirely. Though of course the passphrase feature is still there if you're primarily looking for plausible deniability rather than just providing a layer of security to your backups. One of the other big advantages of this approach is you can not only move from a single backup to a multi-share backup after you've set the device up, but you can also recreate new backup sets if you realize that some of the shares for your older backup sets might have been compromised, lost, or damaged. And this is, again, really important if you're trying to hold funds over the long term and really good in that you can make all of these changes, make new backup sets without having to manually move funds to a new wallet. Now, the other big improvement with this new implementation of Slip39 is that these seeds have a much stronger checksum than traditional BIP39 seeds, even 24-word ones. Trezor defaulting to 12-word seeds, which have an extremely weak checksum and not even fully verifying the whole mnemonic at the device setup has been an issue that I've had with Trezor T ever since it came out because it can be really easy to make a typo with these short 12-word seeds and have the wallet still think it is valid. So this new move to a 20-word slip 39 seed is a massive improvement in terms of the safety and usability of the seed, especially when you consider this in conjunction with the word list for Slip39 where the words are more distinct from each other than was the case with the original BIP39 list. Last little quality of life improvement with this type of seed is the Slip39 seed words lend themselves to T9 text entry, meaning that entering the seeds on the touchscreen of a Trezor T or a Save 5 is a much faster and easier experience. The only thing that's very important you understand with these seeds is that the process of creating a new backup set does not disable, invalidate, or revoke any of the old backup shares. You know, this is very important to understand. You know, this can be a powerful property in that you can also have multiple different backup sets with different numbers of shares, thresholds, and all these sorts of things that all tie to the same wallet, but it can also very easily get you into trouble if you don't take the time to secure or destroy old backup shares and seed phrases that you no longer intend to keep for these Slip39 shares. Though obviously, again, only destroy or remove these old backup sets after you have run through full recovery checks and made sure that your new backups work correctly. And the only other thing that's worth being really clear about is that individual backup shares are not compatible between backup sets. So if, for example, you have two different, you know, two of three backup sets, you can't just use, you know, one from each to regain access to the seed. You need two shares from a given set to be able to reconstitute the wallet. So again, something to be aware of if you're in a situation where you're trying to replace a damaged set, uh, you know, you need to make sure that you replace the whole set uh, rather than just, you know, take one from a new set and hope that they'll work together. And this is a good spot to point out that if you do find yourself in a situation where you have multiple different shares, and you're not sure which set those shares belong to, the first couple of words from all different shares within a set will always match. So it's quite easy to work out which of the shares belong together. Summary time. So it's always interesting to see what new vendors are doing in terms of new standards, new hardware, software, and processes. And this evolution of Slip39 is definitely an interesting one. You know, as someone who does a lot of recoveries with people and spends a lot of time with people who've messed up either their seed phrase or forgotten parts of their passphrase, you know, this improvement with Slip39 definitely seems like a big step in the right direction. It definitely addresses, I think, some of the shortfalls that existed with Slip39, which I think probably did contribute to the fact that it really didn't seem to get much uptake beyond uh, Trezor over the years. And, you know, I'll definitely be very curious to see uh, how this evolves and uh, whether it is adopted going forward. It certainly does make things easier, particularly for newbies, to be able to have both redundancy and uh, security of a physical backups in a way that doesn't also increase the complexity and chance of you accidentally mucking something up through like choosing a bad fast phrase, you know, having a typo, and definitely much simpler than something like multi-sig. At the same time, we can't ignore the major trade-off that exists as of today, which is that if you go the Slip39 route, you really don't have any other hardware options that work as of today other than Trezor. You know, while it's great to see an increasing number of software wallets that are becoming available, particularly important for you know having a recovery plan if for whatever reason Trezor disappears or you lose access to the hardware um, you know there still aren't really other options 
on a hardware wallet front uh, that you can use your Slip39 shares with. Uh, and who knows how long it'll take for other hardware vendors, those who already had supported Slip39, to incorporate compatibility with this new standard. Though on the hardware side, you can always just DIY a Trezor core device, and I'll have videos on that in the future. In the meantime, if you think that a Trezor Safe 3 or a Trezor Safe 5 would help boost the security of your setup and want to help me out in the process, I'll have an affiliate link in the description. Like always, if you have any questions about this particular backup approach that Trezor are using, compatibility with different software, hardware, or tools, or just want to leave a comment, uh, just leave a reply in the comment section. I do my best to reply to all of them. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.